Hi, so this is a tutorial on FLEX, which stands for Fast Lexical Anal Analyzer Generator. So we are going to be writing FLEX programs to match regular expressions and we'll try to see uh, how we can uh, identify the token classes for different, um, different strings. Before we jump into writing the program, I just want to mention that if you're using a Linux distro, you should have FLEX already set up. If you're using SIGWIN on Windows, once again, you should have it already set up. But if you don't have it set up, then you can download and, and install FLEX. It's not difficult at all. And add it to environment variables, add it to the path so that you can access it from the command line. So let's get to writing our first FLEX program. And a FLEX program contains multiple sections. So the first section is uh, the definition section and it is denoted by uh, the symbols that you see here, which is a percentage brace and a brace percentage. So this is my um, definition section. And for now, I'm not going to be writing any definitions here, but uh, this is my definition section. And the next section is the rules section, which is uh, the most important one. And let's try a very simple um, regular expression, which is just uh, a lowercase alphabet, if it's a lowercase alphabet. And if the regular expression matches, I need to write the instructions here. So if the regular expression matches, what do I want it to do? I want it to uh, just say printf um, single lowercase character. And that's it. And um, if it's anything else, so uh, a dot in uh, regular expressions uh, denotes that it could be anything uh, except a new line. So if it's anything uh, other than a new line, and this could also actually contain A to Z, but uh, we talked about a priority order uh, when we were talking about ambiguities in lexical analysis. So this one, because it's mentioned first, has a higher priority. So if it's anything from A to Z, then it won't satisfy this rule right here. So uh, let me just print um, not a lowercase character. And um, the third thing that I want to do is if it is a backslash N, uh, which means it's a new line, the line is ended then um, I just want to return zero. So this is what I should do. Um, otherwise, there's a chance that my program will just be uh, stuck uh, when it encounters a new line and it'll just wait and do nothing. So this is my rules section. Let me um, just write a comment here which marks this as the rules section. So this is the rules section. And uh, next, I need... Um, a wrapper around these rules. So the way I do that is I write yy wrap. And um, let's not just worry about yy wrap for now. And finally, we need a driver function, which is our main function. So what I need to put in the driver function uh, is the following I need a printf, which is um, enter string. And um, then I just do a yy lex. Now, yylex is going to take the input and it's also going to uh, do the rule matching with the rules that we've mentioned right here in the rules section. So that's what yylex will do and that's it. I just need a return zero here and that's it for my first uh, flex program. So uh, now what I do is I want to compile and run this program. So the way I do it is I write flex, um, flex underscore tutorial dot L and this is going to compile, uh, this is going to do the flex part of it. And it's going to give me uh, lex.yy.c, which is a C program. And I'm going to compile it like any other C program. And I do gcc lex.yy.c. Um, I also want the output to be called output. So I do that. And now when I run this, it says enter string. And if I enter, let's say A, uh, it says single lowercase character. If I input, let's say nine, then it says not a lowercase character. If I input, let's say AB, then uh, it's a single lowercase character twice. So uh, this is how it, uh, this is how you can compile and run uh, a flex program. And this is a very simple program. So let's just say that now we want to identify 
uh, identifiers in a program. So uh, if you remember, an identifier could be a lowercase or an uppercase uh, alphabet or an underscore. So this is the first character of, um, of an identifier. And after this first character, I can have um, a character which could be either uppercase or lowercase. And it could also be uh, a digit and it could also be an underscore. So notice that um, I'm, I'm nowhere using a plus. It's just uh, this part concatenated with this part. And also that there is no symbol between the uppercase A and the Z, lowercase Z here. So it just means that if it's A to Z or it's A to Z or it's an underscore, any of these work. And here I let me just write valid and I'm not going to be changing it for some time now. So here I say uh, invalid and uh, I don't want a dot here. Instead, what I want is a dot plus, which means that it could be uh, any number of characters. Uh, so it could be one or more characters. And of course, this is only going to be invoked when uh, this regular expression, so this regular expression here uh, fails. And here what I should also have is a star, which means that this part of the regular expression can be, uh, can be any number of times. It could be zero times, it could be once, uh, it could be any number of times. And I leave the rest of the program uh, as it is. Let's try and uh, compile and run this now. So it is enter string and let me enter num123. Uh, and you can see that it says valid here. And once again, if I try, let's say one, two, three num, then it says invalid. So this is how we can uh, see if something is an identifier. Now, uh, another thing that I could do is uh, I could write the regular expression for a mobile number. And let's just say that my mobile number has to start with a six, seven, eight, or nine. So the first number, first digit is going to be uh, six, seven, eight, or nine following which it will be any digit, so zero to nine. But now I don't want to uh, write a star here. And uh, the reason I don't want a star is because it need not be any number. I want to restrict it to uh, 10 digits only. So uh, this right here is one digit, which means that I need nine of these. And the way I specify that is within braces, I put the number nine. And uh, now I can do a printf um, and let me just write mobile number here. And I could actually put identifier right here. So uh, I think this should work for our mobile number part as well. Uh, let's go ahead and compile this. And now um, Let's just enter a mobile number, which is, uh, let's say 999-888-7777. And now you can see that it does say uh, mobile number. And if I instead enter num, it says identifier. So this is working pretty well. Uh, what we can also do is let's try and uh, see what the regular expression for an email address is. So for an email address, it would be uh, something like um, A to Z, zero to nine, um, and also a dot and any number of this is fine. So it could be one or more. And I follow it up with an at the rate uh, and the at the rate will once again be followed by um, an A to Z is zero to nine or dot or a hyphen um, and any number of these. So one or more of these symbols as well. And if this regular expression matches, then let's print um, email address and uh, let's try this program once again so if I enter my email address here now um, you can see that it does say email address if I enter 999-888 and I hit enter it says invalid now because uh, the reason it's saying invalid is because it's not a mobile number because there, there aren't 10 digits in that. So this looks pretty cool. And now let's look at another thing. Let's just say that um, I want to restrict that this is not, this is not just one to any number. Uh, let's just restrict this to 
there should be at least three and at max 10. The way I do that is I write three comma 10 here. And now uh, let's compile and run this once again. And now let me try s at the rate gmail.com. You can see, see that it says invalid here, but instead if I have uh, nissal at the rate gmail.com, you can see that it says uh, an email address because um, nissal is five characters which lies between three and 10. So uh, this is how you can specify that you want it within a certain range. Another thing that you could do is if you didn't want an upper limit here, you could just say three comma. And uh, this means that uh, it needs at least three, but uh, there is no upper limit to this. So uh, once again, I can have as many, um, of course I should stick to characters and at gmail.com. You can see that it says um, email address, but anything below three and it's going to give me invalid. So uh, this is how uh, you can write regular expressions. And just to prove my uh, point about priority orders, let's just write a regular expression, which is if, and um, if this matches, then I want um, it to print um, keyword. And now let's go back here and try it out. Now you, uh, what we need to notice is that if I write the word if, then uh, this regular expression is going to match, which is for an identifier. And this regular expression is going to match, which is for uh, just if and which is going to print keyword. But this one is something that we've put first. So uh, if I try and run this, um, I think I already compiled it. So I just need to run it now. And let me type if you can see that it says keyword now. So uh, it's matching this regular expression and uh, we can actually move this below this regular expression we have. And uh, this time it is going to give me a warning. So the warning is because it says that this regular expression is never going to match. So you have something above this regular expression, which, uh, which is a superset of this, uh, which is this one, uh, the identifier part. So the identifier part is a superset of if. So the, the identifier part is going to be matched first and the if regular expression is not going to uh, ever come up. So let's uh, try and compile this uh, just to see that we actually get um, the identifier part here. So you can see that when I had uh, the if regular expression above the one for identifier, it was printing keyword. And when I moved it below, it's now printing identifier. So this is another uh, another point about the priority orders. So one last thing that I want to do before we end this uh, video is uh, I want to write uh, a regular expression for alphanumeric um, or let me just write it for lowercase um, alphabets. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to do a printf. Um, and this time what I want to do is I want to print what character um, was the input. So the way I do it is I write percent C. Um, actually a percent S is a lowercase character. And uh, here the variable that I need to give is yy text. So yy text is automatically going to contain um, whatever lowercase character was encountered here. And next, what I want to do is if it's anything other than that, uh, then I want to print uh, that that thing was not a lowercase character. So is not a lowercase character. And um, once again, my variable for this is yy text. And let's also do one more thing, which is let's add uh, within our definitions an int count. Um, which is going to keep count of how many lowercase characters I've encountered. So I do a count plus plus here. Uh, every time I encounter a lowercase character, I want to do a count plus plus. And at the end, after I've done yylex in my driver program, what I can do is I can have a printf which says that um, there were percent d lowercase, lowercase characters. 
and um, then I just specify the variable as count and let's try this program now. So let's try it out and output. So uh, let me just enter the string hello. There's one uppercase character and there's four um, lowercase characters here. So you can see that it prints for every character. It prints H is not a lowercase character. E is a lowercase character and so on. And uh, then at the end, you can see that it, it's also printing that there were four lowercase characters. So this is about uh, flex. I hope you've understood how you can write uh, your rules for flex. And uh, you can use this for lexical analysis. Uh, one quick thing before we end is uh, something that I uh, just want you to take note of so that you don't make this mistake. If you want uh, to detect just a zero or a one, the way you write it is zero one and not zero comma one. Now, uh, what this regular expression means is, is that it's going to detect um, a zero, a comma or a one. Um, but what this means it, is that it's going to detect either a zero or a one. So this is something that you should keep in mind. And also uh, something like this, something like this just means that uh, if you add a plus here, this means that it's going to accept a zero, a plus or a one. So these are some things that you should uh, keep in mind. There are also other rules, um, other um, symbol meanings in regular expressions. You can look those up, but I hope you've understood what flex does and how you can write your flex programs. If you did understand uh, Flex from this video, don't forget to give it a like. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button and share the video with your friends. I'll see you some other time.